All right, so it's Duke here, just giving you a little bit of an introduction. Um, uh, yeah, literally an introduction. It's not really mission making, a little, a little bit, um, but it's mainly just to get you started. I think certainly uh, with Titan's, um, you know, five R sync, uh, giving you the framework should help you uh, get started at least. Um, but to find the uh, actual framework. Uh, folder you need to go into documents armor 3 probably armor 3 other profiles because you would have renamed uh, at some point added a name like I did 5R Duke and you'll find uh, the folder either an MP mission maybe or missions one of those two folders and you see there it is there uh, mission framework VR virtual reality so that's the map it's on and there's all the uh, functions, there's Gaia and different scripts and whatnot to run your mission and you can just yeah, leave all that alone. The only exception possibly is the config which I'll just show you right, right now a little bit later quickly um, but let's let's load up the editor. I must confess I'm very old school um, I was only using the 2D editor um, well right up until today really I'm just switching over to Eden so I'm probably a little bit clunky using this so oh well you'll see me as being human <clears throat> this isn't um, edited at all by the way so this is Duke Unplugged warts and all I've got my coffee I got a cigarette life's good let's crack on okay so there's the uh, mission framework there once you get into Eden editor see there's the map virtual reality and you open that. Uh, bloody hell, it's a bit slow, I think. It's a bit slower than the 2D, the Eden, I think. Anyway, um, and here we are. So you get, um, uh, and there you go. So that's all that slot. That's the playable units. And it's all been set up for you. Um, all the sections, see all this, Spartan Zero. You know, we see Spartan Section 1 on the blue off. Blue Force Tracker, that's already been done for you, so it's you don't have to mess around with any of that stuff. There's a few modules there. Uh, vehicle spawner stuff, vehicle repair and whatnot. Um, so you want to copy and paste that all this into your new mission that you're making. Uh, so obviously, hopefully you know how to do that. Control C. Uh, and then you'd go to your mission. Uh, which obviously you'd have to name Operation Black something probably, eh? Um, and um, so I've set something up here. Where is it? Making mission thingy. There we go. So I'll open that up. That's just asking if you want to save it or whatever. Don't worry about that. Okay. <coughs> um, so I'm just going to go to the map. Uh, this is easier for me because. <laughs> I'm used to it coming from the 2D world. So, paste in your stuff. Uh, obviously, you might want to move this around, setting up your kind of, you know, our spawning area, or whatever you're using in airbase, or some kind of fob, whatever. Move it around to your liking, obviously, all this stuff as well. Um, yeah, there's some modules. That, there's a load of uh, ACE modules and whatever, you, but most of that is crazy stuff in on the actual server side so you don't need to worry about that or the settings and whatever you that's already been again taken care of it's all made as simple you know as to, for it to be as straightforward as it can be uh, for you guys um oh one thing really important i noticed that's missing right now um because of a recent change uh is that you need to glenn if you're watching this I'll try and remind you something to add. If you go into F5, which is modules, see there's Ace X and there's something called Headless. This is really, really important to put down. Uh, so place that on the map, open it up. <coughs> By default, it's on disabled, so enable it. Uh, you don't need to change the delay. And if you can enable, enable the log, that would be useful because that means if there's any errors or anything, hopefully, we can track down uh, what those errors are um, and yeah and that involves the headless I'm not going to go into the headless but essentially the headless runs the AI so it, it, the server focuses on running scripts the objects on the map everything everything else but um, really so um, 
with the headless running AI, it increases performance. That's, you know, we get better frames um, because of that better performance. Um, so that's it, really. That that will actually get you started, at least. And then you can, from there, crack on and start making your mission. I'm going to talk a little bit about Gaia because a few people have asked about that. <coughs> um, that's fine. Um, the thing about Gaia is um, it's very zone dependent. Um, that means, from our perspective, that we have to place down a marker. Um, we have to name it. Name it with a number, not a name. Um, it has to be a number. Um, for a start, Gaia is dependent on numbers. It, it responds off marker numbers. So it's the way it's been programmed, if you like. Um, so just putting Joe blogs, it's not going to function properly. Um, so it has to be a number. And the second reason for that is, again, the way it's been set up is that the... Um, Oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, is that um, the uh, markers will disappear once you get to your mission. So all these greyed out areas will not actually be seen. Otherwise, it might be a little bit of a giveaway, wouldn't it, where the enemy might be. Um, but So you don't, again, have to worry about that. That's been done through for you through the framework. Um, so let's just have a look at these units here. So this is a, a section here. And you always put the code, hopefully the code, it's on, um, doo -doo -doo. I've got mine just in a handy little note thingy here, but um, uh, it's on. it should be on the wiki, anyway, I'm sure there's, I remember looking, seeing it, uh, in fact I'm pretty certain that it is uh, on the wiki Glen put together, um, so you copy that code onto the O's, O's why is the uh, why is the leader an autonomous? Oh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, O's has to be the leader <coughs> uh, of that. Uh, this is odd. I'm sure I set this up earlier. Uh, oh, what? Do you know what? It doesn't really matter. Let's actually just show you. Let's do it. Um, so, yeah, you want to put down... I'm using blue four just so, yeah, just to make it easier, really. Obviously, you'd be using uh, RHS Russians or... I don't know whatever it is you want um so yeah go to that code where did i put it shit what did i do with it where is it da, 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 da. there it is um so you plonk that in actually just indulge me because i'm a bit paranoid because yeah this seems to be recording yesterday i did a take of this and it never <laughs> freaking recorded what a nightmare anyway so what the hell is that oh anyway um so, <laughs> open up the squad leader. In the init of the squad leader is where you paste frigging L Muffin. He's, uh, I don't know how many, how many times he's tested that mission. Anyway, um, on the server. Anyway, um, so um, that's where you plonk the uh, information. And this will make Gaia work, basically. Actually, usually you have doesn't doesn't actually matter uh, but usually you have the cache at the beginning but it doesn't it will still work um yeah so the three things to remember about uh, uh gaia only uh three sort of different behaviors shall we say how you're going to make the ai work um with gaia the first one is no follow so that's obviously that um there's the zone so zone one that's that marker uh that zone uh marker zone we've put down here uh, obviously you can change the size to your liking um, and what that means is that with no follow is that this set oops, <laughs> is that this so I told you I wasn't used to three uh, the 3d editor um, is that this section here is going to happily uh, patrol around this zone and it will never leave the zone it will kind of defend and patrol that that zone it's been assigned to um, uh you don't need waypoints you don't need to to add behavior in fact guy will just ignore it so for example you could set it as aware combat uh freaking careless whatever it doesn't matter guy is going to overwrite it so don't waste your time with waypoints and behavior and all that crap because guy is just going to do it do what it's going to do anyway and the good thing about it is that you just plonk that in and forget about it guy is going to do everything for you um um, and the other two, so that's no follow, so that's patrolling within the zone without leaving the zone. Let's say, let's now do fortify, so what you do, again, zone one. So you know, I just copied and pasted this, you know, quickly you could do this potentially. 
you want to delete the no follow because we need a new one now called fortify again all this is on the wiki but just to help you out a bit so there's fortify so now what this uh, group is going to do is they're going to occupy randomly and it's different every time you preview the mission and editor or every time you play the mission um, they will randomly occupy buildings within that zone um, so that's very very defensive stance fortify they won't move um, and they will yeah stay very very defensive occupy buildings if you had um, I don't know I actually it's not very good at sort of going behind sort of um, I don't know fortifications necessarily but anyway um, but it's very defensive it's good for occupying buildings anyway and and just in a sort of defensive uh, stance and lastly the third one which is perhaps a bit more interesting one in a way and that's move again it's zone one we'll just copy and pasting here of course so we go move put the move away so it's no follow fortify and move that's the three different types that you need to to understand so with the move um like the no follow um, in fact you wouldn't notice any difference if you saw it um it's just going to patrol happy around the zone it's been assigned to um great um the difference with the move is that gaia the the sort of ai commander if you like uh can actually move them outside of the zones um and that is the difference which makes it a lot more dynamic um so as an example you have a section coming along here approaching from the east whatever um, they're engaging they spotted you whatever they're engaging what the AI commander might do is with the move uh, section is start moving them south east or whatever to try and flank or they may push them north or we might push them straight out to occupy these buildings here um, it's pretty smart um, it sort of responds it analyzes the kind of situation if you like I'm not going to all the detail about that, um, but um, yeah, um, so that makes it a lot more kind of dynamic. Let's just quickly have a look at those, so you can have a, see what they look like, see how they behave. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely slower than the 2D editor. Kind of a uh, yeah, I don't know. what the hell is that? All right, <clears throat> um, so here we are, spawned in. Yeah, that's old as well. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go over. I can't remember where did I plonk them around here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so you can see here the patrolling, starting to patrol. The fortify ones. It's probably it's probably a fortify one because they just sprint like freaking nutters. In fact, where are those? You can see them. Actually, let's see where they're going. All those ones. Yeah, yeah, there they go. Look at look at him. <laughs> the fortify ones. They literally just sprint off as soon as they spawn in. See that see that one. They all just run off and randomly occupy um, buildings and spaces and little whatever. Um, so that's uh, Gaia there see it functioning properly you'll know straight away if it is working because they'll be obviously moving like this they'll be patrolling if they're just standing st still uh, that means you have a problem somewhere um, with Gaia at least um, yeah so you see they're just patrolling there quite happily um, okay a um, couple of other things I guess <coughs> about Gaia actually one of the uh, key important thing to remember about guy is it's um it's very um it's range dependent in terms of um spawning and caching it's kind of one range fits all if i show you uh not that <laughs> where is it uh this will do no it doesn't have to set have it yet. yeah it does have the config actually i'll do it there because i can change it I need to damn look at all these missions, Jesus. And I deleted a load recently as well. Um look at that, lots of black there, um who um anyway, uh where is it? Mission there we go. Um so yeah, actually let's talk about the config very quickly. So remember I'm talking about naming zones, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so so forth. Um 
yeah, I won't explain all this, but that basically uh, will, that's what will make them kind of not show on the map. Uh, that's a part of that um, uh, function there to do that. If you do use more than 10, um, you can just change that to 100, you know, simple as that, save that. Um, you don't need to change that. Um, yeah, by default, all this is true. This is the database stuff, so that's Titan's magic map, you know, the after after action report, and, you know, we put markers on the map um, when we make missions or when the platoon leader, whoever, you know, makes a plan, puts, you know, I don't know, markers and arrows and what have you on the map. So all that comes through um, to the mission on the evening uh, on the server. T um, yeah, that's all that done. You need an ID when you sort of uh, publish your mission, as it were, your finished mission, and you post it on the website and all that. Probably need to speak to Titan at that point, but you need a kind of unique number to go in there as well, whatever it will be. Um, the other really important thing as well to remember is this delete marker true, um, what this does, um, because of the markers coming through on the magic map uh it kind of deletes it's set up so it deletes markers um so uh so for example all your kind of base markers fob whatever you know um you don't really need to put down you can leave you can save doing all, all your objective markers and base markers and what have you and just plonk them straight in um <clears throat> to the um, magic map when you set it up um, yeah anyhow there are ex you can exclude markers um, by default there's all these respawn ones down uh, for obvious reasons so if you are using respawn uh, it's not going to get rid of them so for example here I've just added these in earlier uh, these are the the Gaia zones uh, one two three the last you can add these manually yourself in fact you'll need to so if you're using seven zones obviously you need to put in one two three four five six seven seven um the only thing to remember about this I'm not going to explain why it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't yeah can find that out yourself or it doesn't really matter but the last one uh, doesn't have a comma so make sure the very very last whatever the number or marker name is just make sure the very very last one is without a comma um, otherwise you're going to get an error and it won't work properly um, so just bear that in mind um, so let's look at Guy here yeah as I was saying the one thing a restriction about Guy which is why I do use other um, spawning scripts and other bits and pieces is is because of this uh, 600 so what that means is once we come in actually it's a bit more complicated than that but I won't again go into that because there's two stages of caching and spawning but anyway but essentially anyway at 600 meters all the units are going to spawn in which is fine um, but just bear in mind mission design wise um, so what I mean for example if you had yeah Teresa as an objective, maybe whoops, maybe one here, and I don't know, Clear Hill 51, whatever. Um, that means that sort of small area there, um, that's you know, all of them are going to cash in. So if you had 50 units in Teresa, you know, 30 units there, and another 50 there, you know, what's that, 120 is it, 130 units, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, on the map, um, at that one time. Um, so just for sort of bear that in mind in terms of your mission design um, that within your whatever range you set and obviously the longer the range uh, the more chances or opportunity there's going to be for um, things to spawn in so just bear that in mind you have to try and find a happy medium somewhere with messing around with that range not too small um, but not too long obviously you know and you can obviously adjust that 600 uh, default which is generally fine that sort of covers I think pretty much most things so um, but you can adjust that just uh, be aware of that um, the other thing about yeah why we apart from that it's pretty smart and stuff and so it makes more of a challenging AI is the spawning and caching system which is why we use it um, so you can imagine if you didn't if you just plonked units in the editor 
Um, you know, if you have 50 units, let's say in Poleco or whatever you call it, and another 50 over in Zaros and another 50 in Teresa, that means when we all spawn in over here at the beginning of the, the mission, that means there's 150 units on the map already eating up our frames and performance when, you know, frankly, you know, if we're taking Teresa first, what's the point of having 50 units walking around in Polyeco or Zaros taking up resources? You know, it's absolutely unnecessary, um, you know, resource taking. So that's why we use the caching system. Um, so just, again, that just to give you an idea, just to bear that in mind, there's absolutely no need for units to be spawned in already on the map. If you can avoid it, I know sometimes, you know, placing the odd one or two or some more patrol here for whatever reason is, is fine. But just, just be, be aware, try and keep the, the numbers down uh, of editor place, try and keep them on the guile caching systems um what else uh actually i'll show you another perhaps everything else within gaia all this stuff i think you can pretty much leave as default one thing i will talk about is that actually the uh, gaia max slow speed range so um what that means is remember we were talking about was it this one whatever um on the move where guy may choose to move flank whatever um, but it will be at a maximum of that range so in other words guy will not move them beyond 600 so for example um, if we were here um, and you had move here uh, units on move here as that's uh, 1k away or something um, guys the maximum distance they're going to go to is over here somewhere or whatever or guy, in fact, guy probably won't even bother sending them because it's going to say actually they're too far away. So just bear that in mind in your mission design if you kind of anticipate or, or expect Gaia uh, units on move to to reinforce an area that maximum range. Another thing about that, and this is where you have to balance things, is of course in order for for you to utilise that move, uh, if you are as a part of your mission design of course the units have to be spawned in so you have to consider that as well so there's no point in let's say i don't know an objective over here and you anticipate great i've got several units in teresa on move guy will send them over that's going to screw them up isn't it um probably not because they probably won't even be spawned yet um so just bear that they won't even be on the map in other words so just bear that sort of thing in mind what I do sometimes, just as a little bit of tip, use this sparingly though, I would say, because of the reasons I've just been talking about, performance and what have you, is you can, this part here, uh, the, oops, that part there with the cache on, you can just delete that, you can get rid of that. So it'll still work on Gaia because you've got uh, Gaia's own ten when, uh, intend one move, so that's fine. Um, it's just that it won't cache, so these are going to be um, on the map straight away. Uh, um, so use those sparingly. You might want to occasionally have 6, 10, 12 units like that, so that guy can utilize them. And if you increase the range to 1,000, for example, if you had, let's say, two sections on move here on 1,000 without cached, so they're already on the map, then certainly Gaia is going to perhaps you know there's a zone here let's say that's zone three three over here we're attacking here might well send those to uh, up to here to uh, reinforce um so you just have to sort of yeah i think that and might bear that in mind it's another sort of little bit of flexibility you can use but as i say just use it sparingly so you don't get loads without the caching we want to encourage the caching really but of course it's fine to do a, a reasonably small number to do that. Anything else about Gaia right now? Not right now. Um, like as with anything, the more you get into it, it can do various different things. Of course, you. This is not restricted to uh, infantry. Of course, you can plonk this on a vehicle, uh, helicopter, aircraft. You can place aircraft, in fact, on Gaia. Um, Again, with things like aircraft, I wouldn't bother uh, putting a cache on 
for obvious reasons because of the distance and stuff is be ridiculous um so i would leave if you are using helicopters and stuff to leave them off so you can plonk them in, the, in an air base and you know they literally take off as well you'll see them on the runway going on the runway and taking off which is quite cool so that's all done through gaia for you um anything else about guy that's pretty much it um pretty much waffling on now so i don't think there's anything else really uh oh actually maybe vehicle spawner so you have um you know that's where the um we we've, we've set it up with haven't we have a whiteboard so you spawn vehicles and whatnot this is all the class names of all the different vehicle types so you can obviously exclude things so if you didn't want, for example, for whatever reason, because of your mission design, Odin to have access to heavy armor. I'm not sure that we have any these days, but do we? I can't remember. Anyway, if we did, but you could delete that. Or, for example, if you only wanted us to have quad bikes, you could only you know, have the class name, which I cannot see here anyway. But if there was quad, you know, uh, just to have quad bikes, for example, just certain types of vehicles. So you can you know, edit it edit that um to your your mission design and it's called bites down the civilians anyway um so uh actually we don't need this stuff because we're not using it anymore it's not going to cause any problem but yeah probably delete all that stuff uh it's radio um anyway i think that's pretty much it that should at least get you going um a little bit about gaia there yeah how to you know at least get your uh, units and vehicle spawner stuff in. Should keep get you going. Um, but what I would say is try to keep things simple initially. If you're overly ambitious, it you might come up against obstacles and then get bored or fed up with it and frustrated and just leave it. So what I would say initially is just try to keep things simple. There's nothing wrong with simple missions. You know, a mission's a mission. Um, and um you know you you'll get it you know if you get it played and it all works and you know that's great and that hopefully will give you the confidence to make a second one where you might try you know something a bit more elaborate and so on and so forth it's just grow with it um but there's nothing ever wrong with simple is what i would say um what i was going to say yeah things like yeah triggers and there's there's so much to learn you can never learn it all and there's more than one way of doing the same thing honestly <laughs> um i might do one thing and have the same result crazy might do one thing totally differently but have the same result and so on and so forth there are so many different combinations of doing the same thing so it's just learning um a method initially something that works for you um but there's plenty of stuff out there i'm sure on youtube on triggers and all that kind of stuff um and of course the plenty of experienced people around crazy no shit loads titan knows loads i know a little bit you know <clears throat> there's plenty of people out there who who, who you can ask but try yourself first because there are tutorials out there um, and simple things are, you know, are going to stop annoying us, to be honest. Anyway, I don't want to put you off asking. You're totally free to ask. But there are, there are just some things like, how does a trigger work? Well, you know, frankly, you can look that up yourself. You don't need to ask one of us three for that. It's more if you're really, really struggling. You've tried different things and you're really, really struggling. Um, I appreciate it's a learning process and... You know, all of this seems like a totally foreign language and totally unfamiliar. Totally appreciate that. So, of course, feel free to ask questions to any of the experienced mission makers. Um, but do try to solve things for yourself and look things up for yourself. Um, you'll become a lot more independent. You'll learn things. And when things go wrong, hopefully you'll learn how to correct them as well, which is the good thing about learning things for yourself, of course. Um facilitating and copying pasting is great until it doesn't work um, um yeah so try to learn things for yourself um and i will try and do some more stuff in the future looking at various different other things if people want um but in the meantime yeah enjoy hopefully <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll see some missions from you soon okay <laughs>